All right, so a little bit more on this 2012, this matter of 2012. Now, as we mentioned in an earlier video, the earlier video that's up at the site, and, and this particular book right here, which is uh, um, the Lost Book of Books of the Bible and the Forgotten Books of Eden, this particular book right here, which is a compilation of some of the uh, apocryphal, apocryphal and pseudopigraphal um, documentation, some of the early Christian documentations that have not been accepted in the canon of Christianity, you know, of the Romanist, white, European, Gentile church, but usually is accepted by the Eastern churches, by many of the Eastern, the ancient Oriental churches, and the Eastern churches like the Ethiopic church and the ancient Coptic church have accepted these documentation. Now, in that particular book, Lost Books of the Bible, Forgotten Books of Eden, we had noticed since this date is rapidly approaching this date and time, and there's a lot of speculation concerning what this particular date and time holds or forebodes, there's a particular book known as Adam and Eve, or the book of Adam Menawe Haywan. It's called the Gedle. Adam where Haywan or the conflict or uh, the struggle in a sense, the Gedler of Adam and Eve against Satan, their Satan, against the devil, against the, the opposer, the adversary. And here in the Lost Books of the Bible, in this document right here, if you can see this, Lost Books of the Bible uh, and the Forgotten Books of Eden, there's the book, the book we're talking about right now is this. So when we've heard about this, this uh, December 21st, 2012, and there's a lot of stuff, the Mayan and the ancient Mayan calendar says this and that, so forth and so on. Not to dismiss that, but we know that there's a lot of misconceptions when, you know, getting it through all of these um, um, speculative sources out there. But as you study more and more, you begin to recognize there's something going on in the heavens and that we are approaching, approaching some time and we're in a time that's very different. We see the seasons out of seasons and all the other um, so-called so natural disasters and so-called signs um, within the weather and the climate and the atmosphere and Katrina and the tsunami and, and, and different um, um natural acts of drought and so-called famine. And it's curious, 1974 for Ethiopia, that particular famine, which was, in a sense, a harbinger of worse and more famines to come, not to be blamed to an individual man, a ruler, or the king of kings, Kadamawi Haile Selassie, but to bigger and greater signs that the people should have been warned and forewarned to be prepared for. But the, the curious thing about the December 21st, uh, 2011, is, of course, is the calendar thing. It's a matter of time. And what time is it really? Is this according to Greenwich time? How does this particular date match other ancient calendars, not just the Western Eurocentric patchwork cut and paste calendar that we're under presently today which is off by which is off and in fact their own scientists talk about how this present calendar so when people are looking forward to this particular day and have uh, many um, misconceptions connected with it the first thing we want to look at was that date so the 12th of Tassus 7505 is what that particular date would be according to Ethiopic calculations, according to the, the, the Ethiopia Kenak Otater or the calculation, the accountability of the day, which is a way that can be translated. But here in, at the end actually of this particular um, book, before it goes into the secrets of Enoch, and it's on page 80. So if you have the lost books of the Bible, the forgotten books of Aden or Eden, here's what it says in chapter 21, uh, verse 13. It says, And Jared 
said no more. His hands were loosened, his eyes closed, and he entered into rest like his father's. His death took place in the 360th year of Noah. So it took place in Noah's 360 year. Now 360, you know, is a cipher, is a circle, but it's also the mathematical of a square. Both of them are different in appearance, different in, 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 in shape, but the same mathematically, 360. So in the 360th year of Noah, of Noah, and in the 989th year of his own life, so he was nine, he was, he was 989, he was 989, Jared or Yared. Now, Yared is interesting too, and Dekam is Amorit, disciples, brothers and sisters, make a note of Jared. Remember how we teach, look up the name. You know what I'm saying? Really look up the name. Get into the name. Check it out in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary as well. And understand, firstly, what is the main, the plain meaning of the name Yared or Jared. And then there's a link with Yared and Yordanos. Yordanos as well with an act of an idea metaphysically of crossing over. You know, was this period that they say the dark rift coming up and where the sun will be and, and how the, the heavens and, and, and the solar system and the galaxy will be lined up and, and, and form this like this cross, a particular cross or what we, what we know as the wheel of um, the wheel of life in a sense, some call it the wheel of life or the Bible calls it the, the fitret rucha the fitret rucha, or the race of creation, the running of creation. We're coming to a period of time when they say that when the galaxy is aligned and, and the solar system and the earth and the planets are aligned in a certain way, there would be a dark rift. It would be aligned with, some say, the, the dark rift of the galaxy where the galaxy allegedly came from and this hasn't happened in like 26 or so thousand years. Some say 25,800, I think, is one of the numbers um, that is ascribed to it. And so we have this image of the wheel. We have this image of the wheel in a particular, um, there are particular solar signs. You remember when the Bible says, Christ says that there will be signs in heaven and dismay among the children of men when these great signs like um, solar eclipses and perhaps a certain interruption of um, usual, of, of normal so-called life. But all of these things have been already prophesied from before, even in the Bible. So the challenge for us is to find this, a lot. first of all, to verify whether these speculations are true or have, have the ability of truism. And we find that there's much that is correct with the warning of being prepared for a time of change, to be prepared spiritually, psychologically, and physically. Because physically, the changes are going to be very, very um, dramatic. The changes that are to occur in this time are to be very, very dramatic. And so we have a couple of um, a couple of uh, presentations here to share. So let's just get through this verse right here, um, 21 and 13. So it says that on the 12th of Toxis, on a Friday... It took place on the 12th, so when Jared, right, Yared in the Bible, Jared, and we find more about Yared and Jared in some of the other scriptures that haven't been canonized by the Western, the white Western, the Romanist church and their Protestant daughters. So some of these books are called pseudopigraphal and apocryphal, and a lot of smears generally uh, unwarrantedly put on these documentations, mostly because from the Eurocentric perspective, they have little or no knowledge of it, and because most of these documents are contained in Ethiopic and in Coptic, as well as some of them in um, Syretic or Syriac, where early Christianity gained its roots. 
You know, not in the Romanist, the white European, not in this world system. See, this world system is a white supremacist or a Gentile European. So the Gentile world domination that sprouts right out of Rome. And we have that in Daniel, so we should be pretty clear with that. So December 21st, 2012, as we stated earlier, can be found, according to Ethiopic calculation, in the book of Adam and Eve, chapter 21, verse 13, as being the day on which Yared, or Jared, Jared, not the diamond cutter, but Jared in the Bible, um, the day that he died. And it was the 360th year of Noah. Of Noah. Remember what Christ said? Christ said, as it was in the days of Noah, so also shall it be in, in, in the coming of the Son of Man, in the time of the Son of Man. And what is interesting about this, this is before the flood. This is all before the flood. So we have a couple of lines of investigation. One is the name Jared. You understand? Understanding what does Jared mean? Part of the meaning of Jared means the descender. Like Bamarinya in the good is is Warada. In the Hebrew it's Yarada. You understand? Or Yared, Yared to descend. The Yordano, so the Jordans also connected with that idea of descent. And then we can find the ancient the ancient mythos and the and the real structure of the mystery even when we go to the ancient Egyptian or the Kamite of the Arudanta. The Arudanta is also linked along with that. But taken step by step, we find also in this particular, um, um, in this particular chapter, in this particular verse here, that the 12th of Toxus would be December 21st. And the year, according to the Yachopia Kenakotater, would be 7505. In other words, 7,505, right? Now, what is very, very interesting about this is that the ancient scriptures from, from Ethiopic Enoch um, to the, the book of Jubilees or Little Genesis, Kufale, even the, the Gedla Adam or the Gedla Adam where Hewan, which we have in the Lost Books of the Bible, Forgotten Books of Eden, we have a translation here. So I know many of us, this is kind of the books that we only had access to years, years ago, books like um, the Lost Books of the Bible. But as we study it now, we have a direct link in this document here the, book, the Lost Books of the Bible, Adam and Eve, this particular book is Ethiopic because they use an Ethiopic month. They use Toxus, and it's right there on page 80. We find it right there, Toxus. Of course, it probably appeared other places or there were other Ethiopic references, and they managed to weed it very good. And in fact, they kind of tell you that this is preserved in Ethiopic, but they don't directly tell you that it's being translated from the Ethiopic, but in the text, we find an Ethiopic word for a month, and this particular month and date is the Ethiopic equivalent of December 21st, 2012. Now, there's a video we want to show you within the um, remaining time that we have in this presentation right here. There's a video right here, and we presented it before, but we just think it's so dramatic and it's so real that we have to show you this again. Now, here is the earth. This is a picture of um, America, right, of the great whale, the great fish, right? Now, you might not be able to see it right here, but the earth, this is the earth at a 40-degree tilt, a 40-degree polar shift has occurred, okay? All right, you might not be able to recognize this. America will be higher up. It's higher up on the map like now based on the position of the poles presently. Now we're coming to Asia, right? We're coming to Asia. 
And also, if you know, uh, this is Australia. Australia is, is usually lower down. It's usually lower down. This is, the, this is the South Pole right there. So you can see the whole shift that has gone on. And this is with a 40 degree. Part of the tsunamis and the other signs is all part of it. Now, here we're coming to the Horn of Africa. Now, pause that right there. You can see a little bit. This is the Horn of, this is Somalia right here. Uh, beyond the, 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 the Gulf right here of the Aden, um, like the Garden of Aden, Eden, is um, Yemen, Yemen, the right hand, Yemen, right? Now, you see how Ethiopia now has shifted north from being eastwardly, just northeast, it is shifting from northeast, a relative position, to north. Now, we found something very interesting in the words, in the Gutters, for the word for um, north in Gutters, Right is the word dabub, but in modern Amharic, the word dabub means south. And the same thing for the word semain. Semain is in Ethiopic, in Gutters, in the old language, actually is south. But in the Amharic, it is north. So now we ask ourselves, what would cause... Um, the word for north and south to actually change within a language, since the Ethiopic language records itself in the, in the civilization, the Sultani, at least for 7,505 years, because the Ethiopic calendar is 7,500, and actually four, we're going into 05, 7,005, but we're in 7,004 currently. Now, what we're watching right here is a particular video that speaks about, I think it's actual name, let's just get its actual name right here, is 2012 Earth's Equator after 40 degree pole shift. Now, this may sound astounding and people say, hey, this can't happen, but a lot of the earthquakes, a lot of what's going on, even tsunamis and some of these other things, in addition to man and the the certain uh, demonic entities that man is certain men and people are channeling that's giving them certain and certain uh, insight into certain technology they're also interfering with it but there's going to be a blowback for that like the heart program there's a, there's a blowback that's building up it hasn't happened yet but when the effects does happen you're over saying it's, it's going to be the accounting for those particular things but not all of the signs that we see the earthquakes and storms are attributable to God, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Some of it is man and, and fallen intergalactic, inter, interdimensional certain entities, which they are evil entity, evil spirits and evil demonic entities that they are, that they are um, accomplices with. But look at where Africa is. Look, look at this dramatic shift right here. You see that right there? You see that right there? This is the Red Sea. Notice, and normally on the map, this would be down here. The horn would be out here. But you see how dramatically it has shifted. In fact, play a little bit more and look at the position. Look clearly at the position and look what's going on. Look at the direction that it's moving in. Pause it right there. You see the direction where the horn was usually roughly around here, but the whole earth has shifted position. Now, first thing is, do we have any biblical, you understand, any biblical, any scripture? We showed you the particular imagery that we were inspired by a, a certain amount of um, years ago. And let's see if we can just bring that up, bring that up again. Um, I think we saved it under the flame, was on the flame letter. Let's see if we can bring that up. Um, let's clear, let's clear one of these windows right here so that we can uh, bring that up and present that to you. Um, let's just put on the flame right here. We've got a couple of minutes in this particular recording, but hopefully we'll be able to catch up on this and, you know, share a little bit more of what we got. But let's, um, show this scripture. Let's go to Isaiah. 
Isaiah because this is a shaking up. This is a demonstration of the after effect of a shaking up of the earth. And this was already prophesied in the scripture. You understand? As well as shown in the scripture, in the Metzafkadus, in the Bible, in the prophets, in the Beam Old Testament. It's been shown that this has happened already before. So let's bring up this this other Bible search um, and reference engine right here, this search program, this software um, called The Word. And we're going to try to upload this so ones can freely download this as well and try to do something with the software so that ones can easily be able to reference what not before many of us had to reference in a lot of different books. But here we see this verse here in Isaiah chapter 24, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 24, verse 1, and it says, Behold, the Lord, or Yahweh, maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. Now, another translation, more modern, would say, look, the Lord, Yahweh, Jah, is ready to devastate the earth and leave it in ruins. He will mar its surface and scatter its inhabitants. But it loses a little bit of the force right here, a little bit of the force of this phrase right here, maketh it waste. Can you imagine the effects, especially if these effects were to occur in a day of such a shaking, a 40-degree turn. If you look at this a little bit more, it doesn't even seem to be Africa. I mean, look, at it almost like it could be Australia. It almost like it could be Australia from that position. That's Africa. This is West Africa. This is Europe. Look how far um, Spain has come down over there. This is a shaking, a true shaking of the earth. And this is what this 40-degree some say it might not be exactly 40 degree. Some say it might only be um, 20 degrees. But if you look at a 20 degree, it's also very d dramatic. You understand? So this is where we're this is where we're headed. You know what I mean? This is basically where humanity is headed. The only real um, question is whether these effects will happen within a day which is very dramatic if these things were to happen within a day. If these things happen in years, well, there will be earthquakes and, and, and type of tsunami and dramatic events where cities and many people could be destroyed at once, but it would be a more gradual um, shift of the, of, of the Earth's core and, and the Teutonic plates. So this right here is what we're seeing when we look at this particular video about the Earth's equator. This is what we're seeing, because if this was a little fuller, you'll see the horn here, where the horn of Africa or Ethiopia is returning to a northward direction. Now, this explains a lot of the ancient so-called mythology where people say the people must have been crazy, you understand, because certain things are positioned in different areas than they are now. The crazy thing is that these things have already happened before, and many of us are just learning about these things now because the evil system of things, you understand, and the demonic entities do not want us to be awake and aware and most of all to be prepared so this global shift this polar shift where north can become south and south north as we said already we have this in our ethiopic text you understand we have this within ancient ethiopic text that this has happened even the language the language is the clearest demonstration of it, where the word for north, the word that now is north in Amharic, what we can say is 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 a, a language which is born out of the Gutas. The Gutas would be like the older generation, and the Amharic is like the youth. And similar with the Tigray, where you have like the father, the the son, and the mother in that sense. With the Gutas, the Tigr, uh, the, the Gutas, the Amarinya as the son, and the Tigray 
as the mother, seeing that the queen of Sheba was a Tigrayan. So here we have this verse right here, Neho, Egziyadiya Midrin, Bado, Yadara Gatal, Badamam Yadara Gatal. And interesting, the Ethiopians are fighting over Badama. 